I've had quite a few questions recently, noticeably while the weather is getting hotter, about my Aqua Colonia collection. So what I said to my lovely subscribers who have been asking me about this is that I would make a proper video showing you my entire collection. And it is quite a big collection. Um, so what I'll do is I'll I'll go through the standard collection or at least like the permanent collection. Those are the ones with gold lids. And then I'll talk about the ones that have the silver lids, which are the limited editions. Um, I'll also talk about some that I don't have, um, that I've either smelt and then got rid of, or I've never bought full bottles of because I'm not mad for them. Um, and uh, that will include the Intents, the Aqua Colonia Intents sprays. So I just fell in love with these. I I know I noticed them partially because of the bottle and because they're called Aqua Colonia, which obviously like along with Aqua Allegoria, I was probably looking at those classic Aqua, Aqua Allegorias and was like, oh, they're so expensive. How ridiculous. And then came across these. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with a few of them. And then I kind of obsessively started collecting them. So I will buy, if I see something on eBay or somewhere come up where it's like one of the old limited editions that you can't really buy anymore and it's an acceptable price then I will buy it and try it um, and generally speaking the new limited editions we have to wait quite a long time before we can get those in the UK so a couple of these I got very recently um, and I've only just started really testing them out so how I feel about them is relatively new but they're last year's limited edition and I've only just been able to get them this summer there are two that have just been uh, added to Fragrantica that are this year's limited edition one of them I think is peony and sandalwood, which I desperately want to smell. And the other is freesia and musk, which is so up my street. I am desperate to get my hands on them, but I probably won't be able to until next year. So I'm just gonna have to be patient. Um, you normally have to buy the most recent ones from Europe and have them shipped over here. Uh, you can do that from Parfum Dreams. Uh, but a lot of these you can easily get and quite cheaply in the UK now. So they're normally between 15 and 20 pounds. And that is enough spiel for the beginning. I shall get on with it. So 4711, the house of 4711, as it says here, number 4711, is a Maurer and Wurtz um, company uh, from Germany. Uh, it says they've been um, making perfumes uh, and colognes for 225 years although I'm not sure what that actually works out to be now because um, it says the earliest edition was created in 1792 so I never knew what this smelled like until I was a, an adult I never thought to buy it all I knew about this and I knew it because of the uh, what this looks like is that this is the thing that my mum told me she used to buy for her mum um for like presents even though her mum never really wore this but it was the only thing my mum could afford so she just used to buy her this weird little kind of cologne which was far too masculine for for her mum this is a herbal very green citrusy classic smelling cologne it's very fresh it's bright it's light um it's not something that i'm particularly interested in wearing it's got far too much neroli in for me a little bit too much petit grain and the bergamot and citrus are quite sharp in this but i mean that's i guess the whole idea of it it is kind of like this kind of thing you do like slap on after you've had a shave or something you know so the notes in the original are lemon bergamot and orange in the top middle notes of lavender and rosemary base notes and neroli and petit grain and it is like i said very green very herbal so in terms of the remix ones of these, I haven't paid too much attention because um, I always just thought, oh, well, maybe they're a bit too much like this one. However, like I said, when I saw the Aqua Colonia bottles, I felt very differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a couple that are in my declutter bin um, and I'll explain why they're there. Uh, but it, I've still got the boxes for these so you can see. The boxes are actually very beautiful for these. They've got really nice little drawings on that give you an idea of, of what's in here. Um, the 50 ml Eau de Cologne, you can either, basically you can get them in a 50 ml spray bottle or you can get a 170 ml splash bottle that comes with a sprayer. Um, and it's, yeah, it's all pretty simple. White peach, coriander, this one. So as you can see, it has the white peaches. It's got some coriander leaves. And let's take a look at these gorgeous bottles. So this is part of the permanent collection. And you know that because it's got gold um, lettering and a gold lid. So 
gorgeous 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 beautiful bottles they're just so pretty i think this probably cost me about 11 pounds so they don't list any more notes than what's well occasionally they do and i have noted down when they have but generally speaking they don't tell you what notes are in here outside of the two main notes they normally give for me personally white peach is not peachy enough and is too coriandery for me i don't really it I don't particularly like the smell of coriander. I definitely don't like the taste of it. And although I love a watery, fresh, juicy, realistic smelling white peach, I like it to be slightly sweeter than this is. And the coriander, as it does in taste for me as well, turns it very soapy to me. So I'm not really keen on this particular one, but I know a lot of people really like this one. It's very light. It's very fresh. It's it's this is one that's really good for very high heat and a few of these i'm going to talk about are best definitely in extremely high heat so that is a really good summer perfume if you like a kind of soapy green peachy smell and if you don't like things that are too sweet but personally i'm not that mad for the uh, for the peach one now then we have the lime and nutmeg. Now I really like lime and nutmeg and as you can see again like they haven't I don't think they've uh, shown the nutmeg on this but it is more about lime than nutmeg 100%. The nutmeg just gives it a slightly woody smell this one. Um, oh it's so lovely. I was trying to get my husband to take this one but he wasn't interested in this one. It's beautiful, really lovely, gets sweeter and more pretty the longer you wear it. You just put it there for now just to appreciate the beauty of lime and nutmeg. Um, for me though, this smells a lot like the Coty perfume I have called Chanson de O, and I have a bigger bottle of that. It's ever so slightly sweeter, ever so slightly more floral. Um, and so I just kind of prefer the dry down to that, uh, to only that one, to this one just a tiny, tiny bit. But this is gorgeous. It's very lovely, natural, sharp lime. There's definitely a little bit of sweetness in there. And like I said, the nutmeg gives it a slightly woody, slightly spicy smell. But it's mainly lime. Um, it definitely sweetens up the more it dries down. But it's very refreshing. Another one that is definitely at its best in very hot weather. Um, so that is lime and nutmeg. I don't quite know how many I'm going to have on which bit yet. So I don't know how close I'm going to have to push them. <laughs> now then what have we got next all right so let's go for one that is belongs to my husband um oh i mean there's something very magical about this i'm just going to spray it out a second because obviously this is one i don't wear myself oh oh but he smells so good in this so this is um myrrh and kumquat now the note of kumquat in this is super super up my street it's juicy, it's sweet, it's fruity, it's fresh, it's slightly watery, but it's definitely way, I mean, this is way sweeter than these two, you know? Um, oh, and you see, I mean, on my skin, just smelling it like this, I'm like, oh, I mean, I probably could wear this, but it smells, this one to me, because I find myrrh ever so slightly masculine leaning um, in nearly everything I've ever smelt it in. I'd say this is an it's a very good balance of unisex kind of um, slightly more feminine leaning sweet kumquat and slightly more masculine myrrh. But this was just one of those where I liked it. I definitely knew I didn't want to declutter it. But I just knew I'd like this more on my husband than I would on me. So this and because it's got myrrh in it, this was one of his Christmas presents. So... I gave this one to him for Christmas. This is one that actually works very well in hot weather. Um, oh, he just smells beautiful in this. It's clean smelling. It's warm. It's sweet, but it's also fresh. And like I said, that myrrh just gives it a slight masculine vibe. And it's really hard to describe what myrrh smells like because it's maybe ever so slightly resinous. But like this isn't a perfume I would describe as resinous. But it is beautiful and he smells absolutely delicious in that. So I really like that one. I rate that one. I think it's gorgeous. Um, what have we got? Yeah, okay. I'm looking at how many I've got and I'm just pushing them along. So then I've got one of my absolute favourites. I mean, I won't go too far into all of this because I will rate them at the end. If you've ever wanted a perfume that smells exactly like lemon juice, delicious lemon juice, 
no lemon peel and just a sprinkling of sugar then this is the one for you this is lemon and ginger it definitely does have a very slight ginger vibe but it's mostly lemon and the way i describe this one is that it smells like lemon juice with a drop of the syrup you get in like ginger that's in syrup you know if you just took a spoonful of that very very sugary ginger infused syrup and you dropped it into like a, a big cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice this is what that would smell like it's very sharp but it dries down and sweetens so it is i mean if you think of a lemon that's sprinkled with sugar you get that sherbet you know that kind of really beautiful sherbety smell if you don't like sharp perfumes you'll hate this but oh god I mean, talk about waking yourself up. It is an explosion. Now, this I do like this in warm weather, but to be honest, I actually prefer this as a wake up and feel cheerful, um, slightly cooler weather perfume because it's definitely sharper in the summer than it is in the winter. I'm not sure why, but I think the ginger just comes out a little bit more when it's colder and the lemon is very, very dominant in warmer weather. So... If you're in the wrong mood, this is going to be super sharp in hot weather. But generally speaking, it's, I mean, there's never a time when this isn't beautiful. I absolutely love that one. It's so good. Now, the last big one I have in the permanent collection is, oh, so good. Another one. Now, this is for very hot heat. So this is Lychee and White Mint. Um, this one, the 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 stickers peeling off and I have a feeling that's because for a little while I kept this in the fridge when we had a really really hot summer um I don't think it liked being in the fridge too much to be honest but it was just so I could cool myself down lychee and white mint I mean that's it's sort of what it smells like you know it smells slightly fruity in a very watery way and sweet but then with a lot of mint it's definitely slightly toothpastey there's no getting around that it is a bit toothpastey but it's like toothpastey with a bit of fruit and it's it is just the i mean this is what i would wear and i have worn on days when in london it gets above 40 degrees and i have to get on the tube which is always way hotter than it is outside <laughs> so like if you imagine a, like a boiling hot tube this is what i'm going to be wearing i am going to smell fresh minty it's going to cool me down and it really does have a cooling effect it is absolutely fabulous I love Lycia and White Mint. I was never going to get rid of this one, but it's also not one I'd wear all the time. It's very much one for hot weather. Um, and I, I, oh, it's just this, it's another one that's lovely, but definitely that one's more of an acquired taste. If you're a bit funny about mint, there's no way you're going to like that. So next up, and I only have the tiny miniature of this at the moment because I took this one home to my mum and dad's and I left it there, but I have to bring it back because I absolutely love it this is aqua colonia star fruit and white flowers now these have all been pretty fruity you know i think probably if we're being realistic the most interesting one is myrrh and kumquat from there but then they really took a bit of a turn with the uh, star fruit and white flowers and this might be one of the ones that really sent me over the edge of i need to collect all of these i think they're amazing <laughs> so star fruit and white flowers firstly the kind of star fruity smell um that kind of beautiful watery tropical fruit smell is stunning but also the white flowers in here literally smell like spring blossom it doesn't say what's in here but this has a slight similarity with my guest dare it's that same kind of profile but it's not kind of musky the way that that one is and it's not quite as sweet it's a bit more fresh but that one has kumquat and it has pear blossom it's got jasmine it's got another type of blossom in that now escapes me and that's that's what these florals smell like it smells like trees covered in blossom and the overall effect is that to me it smells a little bit like um mock orange so philadelphias which are the bushes we get all over london that's come up right in early spring and make everything smell heavenly so i love this one i will be bringing back what i'll actually end up doing is i'll take this little one down to my mum and dad's and then i'll bring the bottle back because i, I it's been so awful being without it as soon as i came home i was like oh no i've made a huge mistake so <laughs> i need to get that one back in my life because i do love it so much let's put our little baby there 
and then also I don't have the ooh, let me have a sniff of this I haven't got the big bottle of this because blood orange and basil this is fabulous it just to me is leaning a little bit too much towards the original 4711 cologne and therefore it smells a little bit too barbershoppy for me a little bit too masculine but again like if i could have got my husband interested in blood orange and basil uh, he would have smelled amazing in this because the basil is taking it into a slightly green and herbal um like i said like old school barbershop cologne area but the blood orange really smells like a natural blood orange and it is very lovely indeed but yeah so i didn't i i didn't actually i might have actually bought a bottle of that and then decluttered it i think i probably did um and the other one that i've had um but i don't have a miniature of or anything but i definitely had a bottle of it and then i sold it is um let me just double check on what that's called i had Ah, uh, mandarin and cardamom. Um, so mandarin and cardamom, uh, again, it was the same thing. The mandarin orange in it was stunning. But the cardamom, even though I really like cardamom and very sweet perfumes, um, the cardamom in that one, because it was a bright citrusy cologne, again, just started taking it a little bit too far into the masculine realm for me. So I kind of just, I wasn't mad for that one, you know. Um, so... Now we shall move on and I shall talk about, oh, okay, classics, where to start. So this one's really easy to get in the UK still, really affordable. This is, I would say, I'm just looking at them. Yeah, I think so. This is the most perfumey of all the Aqua Colonias. This is goji and uh, cactus extract. So... This is the one that smells very similar, um, but in a kind of <laughs> a less creamy, a less heavy, slightly less sweet, a less thick uh, version of Britney Spears' Prerogative Ego, which is the more fruity version of the original Prerogative. So it also has just that ever so slight black opium, but without any patchouli um, kind of vibe to it. It's very sweet. It's really syrupy. The first time I got this, I wasn't sure about it. And that is because it had that kind of perfumey, almost black opiumy kind of feel about it, which I just, you know, I just recognized this smell. And I was like, I don't know if I really like that. But my husband thought it was sexy. So I thought, I'm going to keep it. He thinks it's sexy. And I started wearing it when I wanted him to really notice me when I was feeling sexy. And I was like, Let's get his attention. Um, and therefore, it just kind of got into my head that this was super sexy. And I now am obsessed with it. Now, I think since I bought this, I have just generally fallen more in love with um, uh, sweeter perfumes. I mean, I think that's just something that's happened naturally. Uh, so this one... I recognise that it smells like goji berries. And goji berries is quite sweet and syrupy. Maybe you could even describe them as slightly sickly, I think. Um, like weird little dried berries. But whenever I smell a perfume with goji in it, I get this same kind of vibe. I'm not really sure that the cactus is bringing anything to this. I don't know. It's just, it's sugary, sweet, fruity. It's definitely got vanilla in this. Apart from anything else, it's definitely changed colour since I got it. I don't know if you can see, this is started to turn a bit more yellow um if you can see the difference in the color and the bottle so i'm just thinking i might get rid of this bit and stagger these in a bit more of a dramatic way so we've got some room um how does that look okay i just i love that i think it's absolutely scrumptious and i um i j yeah i mean <sighs> It's probably like the summer version of my prerogative perfumes and I really like both of those but they're they're in um, my winter collection you know uh, so I think they're delicious the other thing that smells quite similar to this randomly is Elizabeth Arden white tea 
uh, vanilla orchid. It smells so much like this, which is the only reason I don't have a bottle of that is because I have this. Um, absolutely scrumptious, delicious, love it. So then, oh, gosh, what a beaut. Oh, so good. If you like bergamot, this is the one. This is bergamot and green tea. Um, I, th I would say there is more bergamot in this than there is green tea, which is why I called it bergamot and green tea, even though actually looking at the label, it's called green tea and bergamot. It is a sweet and juicy, but quite powdery bergamot with a kind of slight hint of watery green tea. It's fresh, it's sweet, it's really easy to wear in hot weather. There is a slight greenness about it. It's citrusy, but it's so kind of sweet and slightly powdery that I don't know that you'd sniff this and be like, oh, citrus perfume. A little bit, but it's very noticeably bergamot. It's, um, it's nowhere near as sharp as a lot of bergamot perfumes that I've smelt, and therefore I just think it's lovely. Um, <laughs> it's just really lovely. I'm just trying to line these up a little bit and see how well I'm doing. Trying not to make a total pig's ear of this video. Um, which means if I push these to the side, I'm trying to be clever, but I don't know how clever I'm actually being here. I just don't want to knock anything over. Okay, just delicious. I love that. They had like, and that was uh, a limited edition. They had two tea perfumes. And so next up, <sighs> This one. This is one of the first ones that I really fell hard for. This is Matcha and Frangipani. So Matcha and Frangipani, it is sweet, slightly powdery, very juicy. It's it's really sweet. It doesn't list citruses, but there are citruses in this, 100%. Especially when you first spray it, there is a beautiful, sweet powderiness what this reminded me of the first time i ever sprayed it was the aqua allegoria herba fresca now that one obviously that is a bit more kind of herby and and citrusy but this one it just starts off quite citrusy i think but still very sweet and light and pretty and then it gets sweeter it really has that matcha powderiness in it which is balanced out quite nicely by whatever watery kind of citruses they've got in here and then that frangipani is just ever so slightly tropical it's so pretty a beautiful summer perfume i absolutely love it love it love it and then what have we got oh this one occasionally you can get this on ebay but um i think i got this from parfum dreams as well so worth googling if you're interested in this one oh okay i'm gonna have to give this one another spray in a minute as well this is pomegranate and eucalyptus pomegranate and eucalyptus is i mean let's have a spray mm. fresh berries another one that's quite sweet um i would say there is a very the eucalyptus in it it's not too like it's not too much like menthol you know it's not too mentholated this but it gives it a herbal kind of vibe along with that kind of slightly syrupy pomegranate when it dries down so it's another one that smells like quite a sweet berry perfume so these two they're not interchangeable for me this one's quite vanillic but this is kind of the next one down from the syrupiness of this is this um Mmm. Oh, it's just so pretty. Oh gosh, I just love these perfumes. But yeah, so pomegranate and eucalyptus. I I did once talk about it in it also being quite winter and autumn appropriate because there's something almost mold winey about it. I don't know. Um, it's not sour. It's just yeah. I don't really know how. It's, it's quite a difficult one to explain. But if you like. If you like herbal perfumes and you like berry perfumes, you'd probably really like it. Um, it's totally pretty and lovely. So what do we have? Oh, we've still got lots. Let's start with this big boy. This is the only 170 that I have, and this is a tester bottle. Let me just spray it. Oh, mm. oh gosh, it's so beautiful. 
This is red apple and chili. And it says warming on it, which is correct. Mm. Now, this is a very sweet and syrupy red apple. It is very tasty, very nice indeed. Um, mm. The chili in it is genuinely spicy. It has a very slight vegetal kind of smell to it but not in, um, in an unpleasant way, in that kind of capsicum heat kind of way, you know? And I'm someone who, I like red pepper, I like chilli in, uh, in perfumes, and I, I like kind of tomato leaf and tomatoes in perfumes as well. So I, I often quite like that vibe. Um, mm. oh. This is another one where I can wear it in summer if I want to wear something sweet and kind of quite girly um, because it's got a, it's not quite a Jolly Rancher kind of vibe, but it is pushing in that very, very sweet apple, right? You know, it's a red apple, you can tell, um, but it's also really nice in autumn and winter because it has that spicy apple vibe going on and I would say this is kind of like a much more natural smelling and less kind of um childish version of something like Kaali juicy Eden juicy apple you know um it's that kind of lovely red apple but not pushing quite so far into the Jolly Rancher territory if you can ever find this one I think it's such a good one it's really nice um Okay, what else have we got? So some that are, so I'm going to just talk about this one because I'm not sure why this has a gold lid. I'm guessing this initially was supposed to be part of their permanent collection. It's quite an unusual one. Um, this is from a long time ago. Um, because this one, this is called Royal Riesling. And this has a gold lid, as you can see, but it also has a screw top like this. Now, with these big 170s, unless they've changed it, it's so annoying. The Once you've taken off the lid on the splash bottle to put this in, the lid of the splash bottle doesn't fit over it anymore. Um, and I think all of them, again, unless they've changed them for the new additions, all of them are like that. Once you've put the sprayer in, that's what it's like. You can't put the lid on. But this one is a screw lid. And the lid still fits over it. So, I mean, who even knows? So, Royal Riesling, I mean, it. it's actually not that far away from... Oh, there's two things. One, that actually has grapes in, which is my YSL, uh, so Yves Saint Laurent, In Love Again, the modern version of that in the square bottle. Now, that has muscat grapes in it. It's sweet, it's grapey, it's beautiful. Um, and the thing that you can get that smells almost exactly like that that's more modern is Kaali Citrus. That smells almost exactly the same as that perfume. It kind of smells like there's wine in it, like grapes, you know? Royal Riesling, I do believe they might actually have a few extra notes written for this. Oh, I'm wrong. They just say grapes. They just say grapes. That's mad. Um, <laughs> so this smells like the grapes no it doesn't it smells when it dries down a little bit more like a sweet wine but when you first spray it it smells like grapes on the vine it smells green it smells kind of sharp it's very much a white grape kind of smell as you would expect from riesling but it's definitely got that kind of bitter leaves and branches smell but the more it dries down the more you get um that kind of sweet riesling smell but it's not boozy at the same time. It's just the grapiness of that. I think this is a really beautiful perfume, but it's quite perfumey compared. It's more perfumey than any of these, I'd say. Um, and it's super pretty, but I imagine it's a bit of an acquired taste. So I can kind of see why that didn't stay in the permanent collection. But it's definitely not part of the permanent collection nowadays. I can tell you that 100%. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, actually, while I'm looking at it, that Oddly enough, the pomegranate and eucalyptus actually has more notes. So they actually list a few notes for pomegranate. Uh, so let's see. Top notes, pomegranate. Middle notes, violet leaf and eucalyptus. Base notes, musk and woody notes. So that that one is a bit more complex. Maybe it's why it's a bit harder to describe. Um, okay, what else have we got here? Let's go for another one where they've listed a couple of extra notes. Someone was asking me about this the other day. 
and it is quite difficult to describe so this is cotton and almond um cotton and almond is notes of top notes almond middle notes heliotrope base notes cotton flower and this this one is a little bit it's really actually quite hard to explain this and someone asked me if there was anything similar and i've never smelled anything that really smells similar to this properly you know it's slightly like a sharp babe like johnson's baby lotion or something when i first spray it and then it sweetens up and it definitely smells like there's some kind of fruit in here it doesn't list that there's a fruit but it definitely has some kind of fruity smell um and i would say that it's somewhere between the kind of vibe i get from born lovely from sarah jessica parker which i think smells like i mean that is a peony and black currant perfume but it smells like freshly washed laundry wet laundry um clean fresh beautiful but this one is because of the heliotrope in the almond is slight slightly creamier but not massively and therefore also is ever so slightly like the oh what's it called the armandia one from the jeanne en provence that I, that I have which is kind of another kind of slightly bit of fruit very light almond got a really clean pretty smell about it that one's a bit more powdery a bit more creamy a bit more kind of ethereal this one's a bit more of a clean laundry because of that cotton but it's super pretty it's really nice the more it dries down the more beautiful it becomes it's very similar to um royal riesling in that if you if you try it at first you might not be mad for it but it will probably grow on you you know um am i gonna be blocking out i'm gonna try not to block out all my other beautiful ones so yeah so again like if you're interested that is so hard to find that if you're interested in that the closest thing i would recommend would be born lovely if there's no almond in that i don't think but it gives me that same kind of feel wearing it okay and then we've got another one that belongs to my husband oh so tasty he smells lush in this but he smells so good in chocolate blackberry and cocoa um this is one that i mean it only lists blackberry and cocoa but i'm absolutely sure there's some kind of wood in this because it smells quite masculine to me and i don't think that cocoa or blackberry are necessarily particularly masculine but i couldn't really wear this one myself it just it just leaned a little bit too woody a little bit too masculine whereas on him god the cocoa comes out on him so beautifully it's slightly it's got a slight sweet berry syrupiness but not massively and the cocoa is subtle but noticeable and very very pretty so um i really think that's a beautiful one i like it he smells absolutely lush in this i'm trying trying and failing to actually let things be visible here um oof. oh and then we're on to the new ones so okay let's start with pomelo and sea salt so i did say i might declutter this because it was so salty but actually in reality um when i've tried this what it is <laughs> If I sniff this in the morning, I feel like it's going to give me a headache because it is quite salty. If I put it on later on in the day, it just smells like it smells like I've been on a beach and my skin is like sexy. <laughs> it smells like warm, sexy, a bit salty. Um, my husband actually really liked it. I got him to smell it and he thought it was nice. It smells nice on him, but it, the salt comes out even more so on his skin. So this is insanely salty on him. Whereas on me, it's not crazy salty, but it would, I mean, it, at the moment, this is definitely the saltiest thing in my having in my collection. And I really only I think I only have one other perfume that actually has an official salt note in it. Um, I definitely have some that have like a bit of an oceanic vibe. But this the pomelo in this, once it hits the skin, really starts to sweeten up and just turn slightly more sugared. Uh, there, I mean, there must be musk in this it's very pretty i really like it um i think if you like kind of beachy smells you're probably going to be into that and the bonus is there's no vanilla or anything in this it's not like sickly in any way it's not too sweet but the one that i really love 
Ooh. Coconut water and yuzu. So coconut water and yuzu is just... When you first spray it, it definitely is more like coconut water than any kind of coconut flesh or coconut milk. And the yuzu is quite acidic and sprightly. And then when it's been on your skin for a few minutes, that is when it will start to sweeten up and get a little bit more creamy. And oh my goodness, I this, I tried it um, just kind of... Um, after I'd had it for a little for a little while, I tried it on a very hot day and oh my God, I smelt heavenly. I loved it. It was bright and fresh and delicious and creamy. And um, I really recommend this. What I like about this is it is a coconut without vanilla because I've had a few different coconuts and the closest I've ever come to really enjoying a predominantly coconut scent was with the two SJP NYC crush perfumes um, but the problem with those is one of them was more floral and that kind of interrupted the creamy coconut in there and the other one was so I mean just so vanilla heavy you know they just they smell like coconut and vanilla and what I want is something that smells like coconut cream and the closest I've got to that is actually Katy Perry's Indie. Even though there's no coconut in it, to me it smells like coconut cream. It doesn't smell vanilla-y, it's sweet and heavenly. This is a fresh coconut without vanilla, without too much sweetness. And the yuzu just means that this is really appropriate for very hot weather. So I do um, I do have another perfume with coconut in it that is, is very sugary and doesn't have too much vanilla and I like that one too but I think in terms of like hot weather this is just fabulous so I'm going to do some reorganization to make it look glorious and then I am going to talk about some things that I don't have any bottles of okay there's probably been a big jump there because I just reorganize these so that while I start talking about things I don't have you'll be able to um, enjoy the view a bit more so there's one from the main collection i think it's a main collection one and i don't think that it's let me just have a little look here uh oh no okay so it was it was a limited edition and that is aqua colonia bamboo and watermelon so i did have that for a little while but I don't really suit bamboo perfumes and i found that it was a little bit it was too much bamboo not enough water uh, watermelon I should say and it it started to feel a bit cucumbery to me and bamboo on my skin just doesn't work in in like regular non cologne perfumes it often starts to smell like BO on me really weirdly um, but in that one it just smelled like cucumber to me it was very light it was it was the closest um, in vibe to the white peach and coriander where it was ever so slightly vegetal the f the fruit in it wasn't strong enough for me it was very watery very light um, and uh, yeah so that one I did have and then I sold it and that was another one where my husband wasn't really interested in that um, so that's not one that stayed I've also had in the past plum and honey and that one, I was just disappointed in that one. I didn't think it smelled very nice. I didn't think it smelled very much like plum or honey. It had like a dirtiness to it, almost more like a fig. You know, like you sometimes get that earthy, slightly dirty fig scent in perfumes. So that one I was not keen on and I got rid of that one. Um, what else do I have I had? Oh, so I have a dedicated video to the Aqua Colonia range that is called um, Aqua Colonia Intense. Now, I I made that video quite a long time ago. It's one of the earlier ones on my um, channel. So I'm just going to update you here. I only had miniatures of them, like the little sample set thing. So the one, let's see, let's have a look. So Aqua Colonia Intense Pure Breeze of the Himalayas. Now, these bottles are beautiful. I was so hoping that I would love one of these because they are coloured glass. They look so cool. I really, really wanted... I wanted the whole collection, to be honest, but none of them were kind of 
Well, one of them was Full Bottle Worthy and then Smelt Dreadful on my skin. And I will talk about that one last because I think it's one of their best perfumes. But the other ones just either weren't quite something I'd want to smell like more than maybe once ever. And the other ones I found very boring. <laughs> so if we start with the Pure Breeze of the Himalayas. Um, this is top notes of pink pepper, bergamot, mandarin, orange, middle notes, mountain air, lily of the valley and rose, base notes, musk, ambroxan and cashmerian. So I smelt this one before I realised that I didn't like ambroxan. And I don't really remember a huge amount about Pure Breeze of Himalaya other than I remember it smelling. Uh, three of them I thought didn't smell that. Oh no, two of them I thought smelt relatively similar to each other. And it was this one um which is kind of like it, you know they both smell a little bit like different like flankers maybe of alfred sung she that kind of smell that kind of spa like smell um there wasn't really a huge amount going on the florals weren't very interesting but maybe the ambroxan in this threw me off because actually to be honest i don't really like ambroxan i don't really like a cashmerian and i really don't like pink pepper very much which is why i don't and i've never tried the grapefruit and pink pepper from this range um and then there was also the other one. I was about to say they smelled cucumbery. Um, so there's one called Ref Refreshing Lagoons of La a Laos. Laos? Oh no, I don't know how to pronounce that place. Um, it's L-A-O-S and I apologise to anyone if I've butchered that, which I certainly have. So the notes in that are top notes of cucumber, green apple and grapefruit, middle notes, lotus, violet leaves and rose, base notes, musk, white amber and sandalwood. And that again like just smelt like she it just smelt like a kind of really generic boring spa like light blue sort of scent um and in a way both of those also slightly reminded me of the bamboo and watermelon kind of vibe slightly fruity slightly green slightly vegetal really watery i just didn't think either of them were very good um and then we had the intense floral fields of ireland now this is one where i'd quite like to smell it again so if i can get hold of a little sample i'd like to give it another try to see what it was that threw me off of this one because the notes are top notes of osmanthus mandarin orange and lemon middle notes mimosa orange blossom and jasmine base notes oriental woodsy notes cedar and sandalwood and i remember it smelling I thought there was gardenia in it. I thought it was like a powdery and I think it was buttery. That's the word I'm going to use. I remember thinking that it smelled like buttery white florals and it made me feel a bit queasy um, in the same way that quite a lot of like uh, gardenia and tuberose combinations do, even though there isn't. I mean, I can see, but there's orange blossom, which sometimes is far too soapy for me. Mimosa can be really powdery. And I just sometimes really don't get on with jasmine. So, you know, in hindsight, I'd really like to know what these smell like again. So if I ever get the chance, I will smell them again. Um, and then you have the Waking Woods of Scandinavia. Now, I do actually have a little sample of this because... Um, I got one of the carded samples and I purely got it for Christmas because it kind of smells a little bit like a Christmas tree. Top notes here are bergamot, pink pepper and coriander. Middle notes are rose, osmanthus and jasmine. The base notes are fir, olibanum and patchouli. And I would say that this is one where the fir, the olibanum, the patchouli and the rose are the dominant things. And it really does smell like pine and it's resinous and it's green. Um, and it, there is, I mean, on a man, I think this could be an incredibly interesting cologne. As I said at the time, it's the most interesting of that set of four. Absolutely the most, the only one that I thought was an interesting smell, but it's quite masculine. It's not something I'd want to wear all the time. I definitely wouldn't need a full bottle. Um, and because I sold that um, miniatures set all as one thing, uh, I sold it on after I tested it. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to just keep one of them and then sell the other one separately. I wanted to sell them as a set. So I just got myself a little carded sample, which I completely forgot to show you here. But 
Um, that's in a beautiful deep green bottle. It looks like a forest. It smells like a forest, but you definitely get some of that rose coming through. So it's an interesting scent. And that is one that I've got that I don't even know if I'll want to wear it at Christmas, but I might literally just spray it around the room a little bit. Um, I'm sure there will be a day when I fancy smelling like an actual Christmas tree. So that'll be fun. Um, and then last but not least, not least at all, because I think it might be my favorite thing I've ever smelt from them. Um, but unfortunately it was a disaster on my skin so they released i think after that first four intense colonias aqua colonias they released sunny side uh sunny seaside of zanzibar in a gloriously kind of deep kind of sunshine yellow colored bottle and i I bought that one and I was so psyched because I'd I'd I hadn't I hadn't managed to sample that one actually. I couldn't get a sample of that and it didn't come as part of the tester thing. It that's only got four perfumes in it. So I bought the bottle. I smelt it on paper and I lost my mind. So the notes in it are top notes of star anise, watermelon, middle notes of coconut, frangipani and musk, base notes vanilla, vetiver and cedar and it is glorious now i sprayed it on my skin and it absolutely turned into antiseptic i know most people don't get that problem because i've seen other people review it i've seen people talk about it i've read reviews of it but on me it smelled like antiseptic it's literally started to smell like tcp and i was so heartbroken because it is my favorite ever beachy summer perfume um, the coconut in it is recognisable, the watermelon is recognisable, the frangipani is recognisable, it's really musky, it's a little bit woody but not much. The star anise gives it this amazing warm spice and the vanilla is really nice and sweet. It also smells slightly salty, it smells like the beach. But that vanilla, man, that van that vanilla, I thought maybe it was star anise but it isn't because I definitely have had star anise and other things. I've had this same problem with quite a few perfumes that have vanilla in. Um, so there's obviously a type of perfumey vanilla that for some reason just sort of starts to turn into antiseptic on my skin. I've definitely had at least three or four perfumes that don't have star anise in but have vanilla in. Uh, normally a vanilla and citrus actually that just fully turns into TCP on me. Um, so yeah, that just didn't work, which is very sad because I highly recommend it. It is absolutely gorgeous. If you want an affordable, and actually it lasted quite a long time because it's one of the intense ones, but if you want an affordable absolutely wearable beachy perfume that is a really good one to go for because it's it's not as syrupy and like hard to wear in hot weather as something like olympia is do you know what i mean it's because it's one of the aqua colonias it's designed to be worn in high heat it's designed to be easy and refreshing and it is but it's still very sweet it's so beautiful i just love that perfume um yeah so I think I've covered everything that I've ever smelt from the Aqua Colonia range. And, hmm, okay, so I'm going to now take all these off and the next thing you see will be um, my ratings. <laughs> uh, I might just talk about my favourites. So here we have it. This is my top five Aqua Colonias from 4711. So... It's really difficult to actually rate them as in terms of like which is actually my favorite because it really depends on my mood but i think in terms of what i would advise people buy like what i think are the kind of best and happily these are the ones that it's actually quite easy to get <laughs> so i haven't chosen them because of that it's just the way it is so i think <sighs> It's really a toss up for me in terms of what I want to wear the most between goji cactus and star fruit and white flowers. Like I said, I have to bring my big bottle back down because I love it too much to leave at my parents. Um, they, they are both more perfumey, very feminine. I think the most feminine from most of the collection. Um, they're kind of the easiest reaches. They go with a lot of things. This one is a beautiful fruity floral. This is like a syrupy, creamy, vanilla-y fruity. Um, and I absolutely love both of those. Um, 
So I, I can't really pick which is my favourite. I mean, probably at a push, I would go for star fruit and white flowers just because I think you you can just wear it any time. And the goji cactus, I will just often wear like the more syrupy version of that kind of profile in winter. But then in terms of like just an absolute classic aqua colonia style scent, lemon and ginger is the best lemon perfume I've ever smelt. I think it is just... I, you just so rarely get a lemon that doesn't also have the pith and the peel and the oil. It's so rare to get something that is lemon juice. And that is what that is. It's very sharp, but it's got just enough sweetness in there to balance it out. It's a sherbetty heaven. And I don't have a huge amount of lemon perfumes, but the there's nothing that compares to this in terms of just a pure lemon. And it is the most joyous perfume in my collection in terms of just pure, bright happiness. Um, and then these two are kind of tied as well. So although I say like top five, <laughs> it's like these are both number one, this is two, and these are both three. Because I think the tea collection, even though there's only a couple, are just so glorious. You can see I've actually used slightly more of the bergamot one. Um, but I don't think that's because I prefer it. I think it's because um, I, I probably prefer this one and I try not to use it all up, if you see what I mean. It's just... <laughs> Again, it depends. If I want something that's brighter, I'll go for this one. If I want something that's a bit sweeter, a bit more powdery, then I'll go for the matcha frangipani. But I think both bergamot, uh, I mean, if you don't like bergamot, you won't like it. But um, green tea and bergamot, beautiful summer perfume, hint of greenness, hint of tea, nice kind of slightly powdery citrus, but not a juicy citrus, if you see what I mean. Um, and this one is just slightly herbaceous it's powdery it's floral it's sweet but it's still bright and light and gorgeous so yeah i absolutely love both of those um and these are the five that i'd say if you've not had much experience with aqua colonia these are the ones i would say you should try first and you can get most of these in fact i think all of these i've seen for under 15 pounds in the uk it's always worth checking perfume click and health farm they probably have some nowadays from uh, th like third sellers if you see what i mean on sephora so yeah i mean i've got i can't wait to get this one back i miss it it's just it's like spring blossom it's like the smell of beautiful spring blossom in a bottle um so yeah so i hope this was helpful to everyone i know it was a really long video but um i'd had enough questions about these that it, it felt like it was a good time to make one Bye, guys.